Hey, this is Warren Redlick. Quick video. James Dauma predicted Tesla bot before anyone else did. This is the clip from our video back in May. Are you ready? Let's go. What other robots might Tesla develop using this technology? I would love it if they would develop a general purpose humanoid robot. Uh, it's, it, uh, so th that's a benchmark that I use for talking about robotics a lot, because if you can adapt the environment to your robot, your robot doesn't have to be very smart and you don't need AI, right? The more your robot has to adapt to the environment and the more complicated the robot is, the more you need AI to be part of the solution for that robot. So like factory robots, they have a totally constrained environment. They don't need any AI at all. Uh, drones, you know, they need a certain amount of AI today, the way that they get used. If you've used recent generations of, of uh, consumer drones, they're, you know, they're definitely putting a certain amount of AI into, in, into them because a drone has to accommodate its environment. You don't put the trees where it's convenient for your drone. Your drone has yeah. to fly in a way that's convenient for the trees that and you, you have. You don't, you don't, right? you don't set the wind to be appropriate for the drone either. Right. Right. It's a, the drone has to accommodate its environment to the best that, that, that it can. So when you look at the spectrum of all the different things you could use robots you know, in the world, one of the axes rated on is how much, how simple is the environment and how much can the environment be adapted to the robot? And it, at, at one extreme of that, which is I think a very commercially interesting application is, there are all these things in the world that are designed for human beings, right? Doorknobs, kitchen utilities, washer and dryer, a car, you know, the boxes that we carry around, you know, like all the hand tools, uh, you know, the portals, the, so much of the infrastructure of the world that we live in is designed to accommodate a human being, which is, you know, a creature that is, a, you know, about this high, that weighs about what I do, that has about the same physical strength that I do, that has about the same dexterity, that moves at approximately the same speed, that has the same set of perceptions and reaction time and that kind of stuff, right? So there's a ton of use, like if you can build a creature that drops in that spot, that it, that has essentially the same gross set of characteristics, that one creature can could, you know, that one, I'm calling it a creature, that one mechanism. <laughs> uh, it, I mean, there are, there it, it, it has a lot of applications that you could immediately drop it into if you, like if you could build that thing. But the flip side is we're not gonna adapt the environment. Like if, if I, the, the benefit of being able to build a humanoid robot, and there are lots of other useful things. This is just like, you know, call it a thought experiment, right? The benefit of having a humanoid robot is that there's a, that if you've got one, there are so many things you could immediately use it for. But the flip side of that is that, is that we're not going to adapt all of those things to suit the robot. Not much of it anyway, right? We're, we're, I'm not, we're not going to change all the elevator buttons in the world so that they're robot compatible, right? We're not gonna right. change all the doorknobs. We're not gonna change all the hammers, right? Th these things are all things that are, that are built for people. So if you want the robot, if the robot is a physical adaptation, if the body of the robot is a physical adaptation to fit the, the, uh, the economic niche that the human body is, is uh, performing in right now, you have to provide the kind of perception you know, the ability to navigate in the world, to plan and whatnot, that's on a scale for that, that human beings have. And that's an AI problem, right? Right. That's, a, that's kind of an extreme example. So what's, you know, can't, could they do that? If they could do that, that's, you know, that's kind of the net plus ultra of basic robot concepts in terms of the amount of utility that you could get. But it's also an extraordinarily difficult problem. That problem has a lot in common with the autopilot problem. Now, the environments that that a robot has to navigate are more complicated. The uh, you know planning the rules. There's a lot of stuff which is more difficult. Some things are simpler, like you know a robot can walk slower because this, there's not going to be a line of robots or a line of people behind them waiting for them. Like you know if you if your robot takes three hours to mow the front yard, you probably don't That's care. Right, right, right. It's not that big a deal as long as I don't have to do it and it gets done right. That's that that could be okay. Right. Um, but it is a very complicated problem. And the, the, one of the things that I think is really interesting about what Tesla is doing with Autopilot is not just the development of Autopilot itself or the economic benefits it proves. While those things are very significant and even by themselves, they're more than enough reason to do that thing. But Tesla is also pioneering a process for rapidly developing an extraordinarily sophisticated AI stack 
for controlling you know, a sophisticated object in the real world, in the real world that human beings inhabit, right? It's really complicated that has where, you know, actions have consequences and there's this very long tail of, of weird things that you have to be able to deal with. Uh, so like, I think that's, you know, that's a really interesting example. So you mentioned a roofing robot. Yeah. So, so a roofing robot kind of occupies a, a space that's between these two, right? That like roofs are much more constrained than like every sidewalk and, and hallway and, you know, I mean, the environment that you have to move in. Also, the things that the roofing robot has to deal with might be a small subset of all the things a human might do. You know, it, you can use a staple gun to attach things. It only has to be able to, re to recognize a certain set of objects well, and whatnot. I would say humanoid form might not be ideal for a roofing robot. Yeah, and it wouldn't be. Right. But like, Certainly. I, I mean, think a spider bot. four legs. So it's stable on a, on a roof. I was right? thinking spider you something stands on two legs. Spider bot, so it can climb, maybe it can even climb the house or just climb sure. the ladder better. But you know, I my pick my pitch for a roofing robot is number one, Tesla has a problem getting roofs installed. And if you could and and roofing is dangerous. Roofing is one of the most dangerous occupations in the world. And and I just I don't know if you know my history. I'm I'm a personal injury lawyer. I'm a personal injury criminal defense lawyer. Mm -hmm. I'm mostly retired from all legal work i i no longer have any personal injury cases but i know from my work falling off roofs is really dangerous right like you probably know that uh, you can a roofing robot it could stand on the ground if you just make it tall enough that it just leans over well, to put one theory on. is it stands up but the, the thought is just plain and simple if you can offload some of the work that humans are doing so that the robot's doing it instead then you are you're saving lives, right? If you take half the work that humans are doing on the roof, I mean, you're you're taking jobs away. This is one of the things that people hate is you're taking jobs away from humans, but I would rather take the dangerous jobs away from humans if I could. Um, like lawn mowing isn't particularly dangerous. Sometimes lawn mowing can be dangerous if you stick your hand under it, but generally speaking, lawn mowing, as long as you're somewhat careful, is not that dangerous. But roofing is very dangerous. So people who don't know this, if you fall from 10 feet, there's a decent chance you're gonna break a bone. If you fall from 20 feet, there's a decent chance you're going to die. If you fall from 30 feet, there's a very high chance that you're going to die. Um, and some of our roofs are 20, 30 feet high. So if we could replace half of the human labor with robots doing half of that work, then we're going to save half of the lives of roofers, right? So, and and I like what you're saying, that it's a constrained environment. You don't have to learn everything. You're, 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 the the, the uh, space that you're dealing with, that the robot is dealing with, is a lot more constrained. It doesn't have to worry about traffic lights. It doesn't have to worry about, uh, I mean, it's it's kind of a 3D space more than, driving is more of a 2D space and roofing is a little bit more of a 3D space, I would say. Is that fair or is driving, you know, cause you're- no, it's, I would say on the roofing robot thing that uh, it that the software problem of the roofing robot is probably not, complicated enough to be worthy of an AI day kind of presentation. It, it's, I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if, if uh, Tesla has a lot of clever ideas about how to streamline and improve the safety of roofing. And maybe that will manifest in a, in a roofing robot. That would be great if they did that. And it, yeah. uh, but, uh, but it, I don't, I wouldn't see it's a it's a bit too constrained to really be worthy of artificial like doing it with a drone is is tougher like perceiving the real world and dealing with highly variable situations where you you don't have an opportunity to recode the you know the robot in order to or to pre adapt the environment to the characteristics of the robot before you put the robot into action those are those are when you can't do that, that's when you start really needing to use what we would, you know, reasonably call AI. Today. AI is a moving target, right? Right, right. <laughs> it's like uh, we we keep redefining the term uh, every every time the machines get any better. We say, well, that's not AI. <laughs> right, right. That's it. James Dalma called it a general purpose humanoid robot. He called it. If you want to hear more from James Dalma, check out my full interview with him here. Check out my other interview with him here. Check out the t-shirts, James was less wrong, let's be less wrong. Check out the water bottle at elonbits.com, links in the description below, and support this channel on Patreon. Thanks to the Vasa Law Firm and all my Patreon supporters for helping this channel grow, and thank you for watching.